This is a 10 spoke Shelby wheel in um, as we talked about before, most people threw the hubcaps out, <laughs> went out and bought some of these and put them on. And, uh, but since uh, we've had the car uh, redone, uh, I didn't put the hubcaps back on it. And uh, a lot of people call it the hubcap car now. And uh, actually you get a lot of compliments that way. Welcome to another episode of My Car Story. I'm Lou, and today we're gonna to be speaking with Mark Hopkinson. Mark, welcome to My Car Story. Thank you, Lou. And today's topic is gonna to be your car, of course, which is why we're here and people are watching. Sure. You have a 1968 uh, Mustang Shelby. I do. How long have you had that? I've had it 10 years. Why the Mustang Shelby? Well, I've always liked Mustangs. I had a couple other uh, Mustangs before this, and. Uh, it was one of those uh, times where an opportunity came up and I thought if I don't do it now, I, I probably will never do it. So how'd you become a Mustang guy? My, my father was always a Ford a buyer. Okay. He bought Fords all his life and I can remember going to the dealerships with him and, and looking at the cars. Really? And, uh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. So the first time you had a Mustang, what was your first Mustang? It was a 1970 Mach 1. 1970 Mach 1, nice ride. Yep. So a 70 Mach 1's got great styling to it. Do you remember what engine it had, the 390? It was a 351 Cleveland. 351 Cleveland, the four barrel then, I'm yep. assuming with, all right, great. So uh, color on it? It was red, almost red. the same color as this car. And what was the next Mustang? Uh, 1996 Cobra convertible. 1996 Cobra convertible, you had the, th still the 302? Uh, no, it was the 4.6. Here it is, a couple of years go by, it's 2005. How did you find this one? A uh, good friend of mine I grew up with. Uh, he's been in the car business uh, all, uh, matter of fact, he did most of the work on this car all his life. He had a friend that was retiring from Ford and uh, it was time for a change in life. His, his wife had passed away, so uh, he was selling all his cars and this happened to be one of them. So this was one of his other girlfriends and when his wife passed away, you had the good fortune of being the caretaker of the next one. I did, I did. Right. Okay, so now this Ford person, you've given me a little background, isn't sure. your normal Ford employee leaving. He kept meticulous records he, of the car. He did. Okay. He did. So he had the car since when? He purchased it in uh, 1980. Okay. So from 1980, uh, we've got a booklet here. He goes through the car step by step, month <laughs> by month, puts every receipt in the car. Yep. And your friend tells you, come on, let's go see the car. Where was the car? What, what city was it in when you're? It was, it was in Ohio. Okay. Small town in Ohio. So you took a little trip to Ohio. Yep. And you get there in the garage when it opens up and here it is. Yeah, he had a, a bigger garage and uh, it, uh, you know, had a couple cars in there. You know, typical car guy, he's got yeah. stuff here and stuff there. Did, did you see pictures of it beforehand? No. Okay. So here you are, it's 2005. You open the garage door. I mean, when you saw the car, did the angels just sing? Well, they did, but you yeah, know, exactly. you, 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 you don't know every you know old cars. Uh, you just don't know what you're getting into. Right. Uh, in, and uh, but as I said earlier, it was just a it was an opportunity uh, yeah. that you know presented itself, and sometimes you have to take a risk. What what'd you do to it? Yeah, the original paint was oxidized, so we just buffed it out, and, and it was okay. Yeah, and uh, it needed some minor body work, uh, so I drove it that summer, and you know it. it leaked every fluid it ever had in it. So uh, at that time we decided, let's just uh, rebuild the engine over the winter time. So uh, that was in the uh, winter of 205. We rebuilt the engine and did some minor, minor body work and, and that was it. So who, give a shout out to your body guy. Uh, actually, it's, uh, his name is uh, Don Hovel Racing. Okay, Yeah. so they did that. And who helped you with the engine? He, he did that. What's his name again, Don? Don Hovel Racing. Okay, got it, yeah. Don Hovel Racing. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so Don, we appreciate you putting this car back together that we're going to be talking about here today. He's done many Shelbys and Mustangs. So Is yeah. that his thing? No, he does all vintage cars. Okay. Yeah, and, he, and, and vintage racing. Is he local? Yes, he's up in Fox Lake. Okay, all right. Uh -huh. So uh, at this point, he probably, he's already a friend of yours because was this the, guy, the same guy who talked to you about the car or a different person? Same guy. I actually grew up with this guy on okay. the south side. So you guys grew up together, yep. knew each other. 
and uh, uh, here's his car. So your car, but his his work. So you get in it, you're driving it home. How you feeling? Actually, we uh, we had the trailer at home. Okay. Uh, so and, and I wasn't it there. Star it started. Uh, it did, but a little rough. Okay. So uh, he brought it uh, up to his place and uh, did some minor mechanical on it just to get it drivable again. You know, it hadn't been used a lot, and yeah. things dry out and leak and everything else. Yeah, right, else. right, right. So, yeah. so he had it for a long time. He basically just stored it, and does it have, what kind of mileage do we have on it? It's got uh, approximately 48,000. Original miles. Yeah, and that's documented through his um his Meticulous notes, notes. And his notes in there, too, yeah. <laughs> so. And every area that came up with the next oil change or put the new spark plug in, et cetera, et cetera. All right. right. What I want to do next is just go right to our main event. Let's sure. take a look at your car and right. let's let's go through some of the parts. Yeah. What, what I'm thinking about it though, just before we do that, what are some of the parts of the car as a Mustang fan, a guy who goes out and gets his Shelby, is this you know, what are some of the favorite parts of the car that you see? Well, um, you know, they say good styling, you know, or, or good design never goes out of style. Right. And, and I think for many years the, the Mustangs were all that way. I mean you, you see them today on the street and you s still say, wow, it's been 50 years since the first Mustang and they yeah. still look good. So I always like the styling. Okay. And, uh, you know, obviously, obviously the Shelbys, they put a few extra uh, pieces on and, and kind of, yeah. you know, made it look even a little better. Dress it up. Dress it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, beautiful. All right, let's go right to the car. Okay. And here we are finally, Mark, at our main event, your Shelby. So we're colored in factory candy apple red and uh, i love the front end how it's got this fish open mouth look to it yep. and the 68s tell me a little bit about the 68s versus the 69 is a completely different yes, front end and a really completely different car right. so uh, you can take a look at the my car story and go to 69 shelby and see what that looks like but for the 68 and the 67 tell me about those because they're they're similar 67 and 68 are very similar, almost identical. There's a few things that they changed uh, for a couple of reasons. Yeah. The hood on a 68, the hood scoops are all the way out in front. Um, they redesigned it because on the 67s, they were in the middle and they had overheating problems. It wasn't functional enough, so they moved it out. And it, uh, you know, for a big black car, it runs, you know, relatively uh, cool. I'm, I'm not super cool, but it, it's, yeah. it doesn't run real hot. So did a, that's one change they made. And then also in 68, they had to put marker lights on it because of the insurance regulation. So there's a lighted marker light on the front, both sides, and then there's just a reflector on the back. But okay. the 67s did not have that. And the 67s in the front, they had uh, early production. They had the fog lights in the middle. They had a problem with overheating. They moved them out to the end, and they were round, uh, almost like a headlight. These are actually Lucas uh, uh, fog lights. And these hood fittings, they call them... Zeus fittings, D-Z-U-S yep. fittings, yep. instead of hood pins, which were the year before too, correct? Correct, they were actually pins, that's so correct. So the interesting thing about this is, I want people to see this from the side, there's a little gap in there, which yep. is actually correct. Yep. And the hood is, by the way, made, it's not made out of metal, it's what? It's fiberglass, along with the front, of the, uh, front pieces uh, here, and the trunk hood in the back. Oh, really? Yep. So this is fiberglass? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so the hood, fit, uh, the hood fittings are a little bit lifted up, and they're only a quarter turn. Yeah, they're just maybe about a half a quarter, and that's it. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, I've, I've been at shows where people and then they pop up. don't know, and they will crank them down oh, yeah. and kind of break them. Yeah, okay. And then the, the venting in the back of the hood right there, that was the same for 67, yeah, 68? Yeah, almost identical, yes. Okay, and then coming over here, this black, is this paint? No, those, that's just tape, and it was just more of a decoration. Uh, the funny thing is, there's very f few pictures you can see of original cars if you're trying to reproduce that, but there are a few, but no one ever took pictures of that. So. Okay. The interesting thing, I think, is I, I wonder if the back of that hood, from a driver's perspective, is so you don't have glaring hood scoop. It could know, be. Almost like the black on a football yes. player under here. Correct. The other thing, uh, we've got a couple of features here right in the front on the side. You have no hubcaps, and I know that they had rims. You have rims, I've yes. seen your rims, mm -hmm. but why don't you have hubcaps? When uh, these cars were built, they were built in New Jersey, and yeah. they were shipped to Michigan uh, uh, via train, 
and they were uh, they were actually finished by the A.O. Smith Company. Okay. Okay, and they had done Corvettes for a while, and then they did uh, 68 Shelbys. Um, Ford was on strike at the end of 67, so okay. they, they got a late start on these. Um, but to answer your question, when they left the factory, yeah. the hubcaps were in a box in the trunk. But everyone <laughs> grabbed them yeah. and threw them in the garbage okay. and put the Shelby mags on there. Okay. But I do have the original hubcaps in the trunk. And that worked to your advantage because in 2013 at the Geneva Concourse d'Elegance, this car was there and it was being judged. And the judge came and asked you that simple question. He's like, you got a complete car here. It looks fantastic. You have no hubcaps right. on these rims. And you explained to him that. Yes. And the chief judge came back later and said what? Uh, we were actually going through the line. They told us we had won, which we were stunned. And uh, he came to hand us the trophy and he said, I heard you have the original hubcaps in the trunk. Which is the correct place. Which is the, the correct factory. place. Yes. <laughs> he, was, he was enamored with that, which is great. Also love this section here where we have the Cobra emblem and then the GT500 yep. right there. Tell me what's, why the Cobra emblem is a big deal for a 68. Well, it's the only year they put the Cobra emblem on there. Uh, Shelby had so, so, sold the rights uh, to the Shelby name uh, to Ford and they were trying to brand it a little bit more towards Ford uh, and on the way from Shelby. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the GT, there was a 350. Correct. A 500. Yep. And a 500 KR, King of the Road. Right. This is a 500, which is a 428 police interceptor. Um, it was, this is the number 449. It was uh, built in December of 67. Okay. And the 350s were different engines, I'm guessing? Right. What were, what were they? They were the 302s. They're the 302s. Right. So we got the 302s, the 428s, which is the one you want. Of course. Yeah, of course. And then, <laughs> and then the KR as well. Okay. Right. And then just from the side here, we've got the tight mirror right there so you can yep. see, see wonderfully the venting Vent windows, window, which is great. It's still work great. And you've got the side scoops. Are, are these functional? The top one is functional. It uh, actually takes air out of the engine compartment, which makes it uh, very nice. Okay. And, and the bottom one is not. The bottom one just looks really great. Right. Okay, yeah, it's perfect. decoration. Yes. Fantastic. I love the back end of this scoop because it looks like two jets because there's an opening in the back of it on the, on the end of the right. wings that are zipping right through. Yep. So I know that it's functional from the inside as you shared, Correct. but I, I love that look to it. It's just all these little details. Speaking of the little details, the roof line has a slight little buckle in it that goes all the way through the back yep. and it starts smooth and then it runs into that little crease just to give it a slight separation in, yes. the, in the two pieces. And um, there's actually something about beauty that says that symmetry is part of being beautiful. And that's the separation that gives it that symmetry. Sure. Tell me about, and we, is this back light, is this marker light lit? No, it's not functional. Again, it was just an insurance regulation. So they, they plopped them on there. And uh, the 67s, as we said earlier, uh, don't have those on there. This is, I love your car. That's probably the only mistake that they did on 68 by taking a beautiful quarter and then cutting that off. And I love how it swoops right off the door, the door window slightly pulled back as though it's rushing through the air, and then this slight curve right here, and this fin, and then a nice tip off the yeah. end. And these, you said, are not metal. No, these are fiber, uh, the trunk lid and the, and the corner pieces are fiberglass. So these two are fiberglass. All right, yep. now, now my favorite part of your whole car is the rear end. It has, tell me about what's the difference between 67 and 68. They're very similar. Uh, the 67s did not have the grills over the lights. Okay. Okay, and these are sequential lights, uh, so they, they, they light up individually uh, for the left and right hand turn. And the centerpiece here, that's, that's got the Cobra emblem again, that's not just the centerpiece, that's your, that's that's a, your gas filler. That's your gas cap, right. And that's functional. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, open that's that up it. for me. Yeah. Just have a little hint. There so it, it drops down. That's got to be a fun little piece to try to replace something like that. You hope it never breaks. And I can see that there's a spring, so it's spring-loaded. Right. Okay, and then just yep. you just pop it right back yep. up. It just goes back up. Okay. And, boom, and of course, no mistaking the wonderful Shelby words across the back of it. Yep. And the beautiful symmetry of the pipes in the back. It, it, it's it may be the best looking tail end of quite any Ford, period. Let alone the fact of probably the best looking Mustang rear end in my opinion, uh, ever. So I just love that. I want you to open up the trunk. Sure. Because you've made mention that you still have the original hubcaps. I want to see that and so okay. does everybody else. All right, great. 
Yep. We will call you out on my car story. We'll make sure that All what right. you verify You're is You're verifying everything. So there you have it. <laughs> there they are. They're in the box. In the box. And we see yeah. the box. We see this is obviously the original full spare tire. Yep. I usually wouldn't go into the trunk, but you threw the gauntlet out there by saying there right. were the caps. And we've got the original tire, so we'll show those as well. Okay. And then one other thing that I wanted to talk about, you can shut that now, we believe All you. Right. All one right. other thing is you talked about this piece here which is your, your Marty report right. and all your history. So we're going to take a little shot of that so people can see this is the original deal. The Marty report is pretty much uh, the gospel as we know it. It is. It is. And, it is correct. And you've given a little history of your car and where it came from so people can get the flavor of, of all of that. Right. Okay, so before we are done with this section in your sure. man cave, we've of course got to hit some of the stories of the My Car Story. So who signed this one up here? Um, that's from Carol, uh, Carol Shelby. That was actually a, a giveaway in uh, Mustang uh, Monthly. That's great. <clears throat> Where did you find this? Tell me what's inside this clock. It's uh, just a simple neon clock with a 68 Shelby uh, in w going one way and a 68 going the other behind it. <laughs> that is great. Now, what is this? We've this got is actually an old Hertz uh, ad when you could rent a Boss 429, a Cougar Eliminator, or a Shelby. And 69. Correct. That was pretty good, yeah. pretty good uh, timing right there. And this is a beautiful shot. And whose car is this? That's this car with the uh, Shelby 10 spokes on it. And we're going to show those. We'll drive it outside and we'll show the 10 spokes next to the other ones. Some Mario Andretti information here. Yep. And we've got the Stripe Lightning. What is this? I've got a 67 badge there for the car. But This is a, a poster I actually forgot I had. And if you could see the... <clears throat> Outside of it, it has all the tack holes in yeah, it. Yeah, right. Uh, I, those are covered up now, but uh, so I just put it up on the wall here. And this is actually a floor mat. That is a floor mat, but it looked too good to be a floor mat. So. Yeah, so it looks great on the wall. Now, here we've got the shot of the original The Boys of Summer. We've got, uh, uh, I'm going to jump in here with you. We've got you right there. Yep. And then we've got yep. Don, who helped finish this car. He did. And he was also... He was the best man in our best wedding. Best man at your wedding. Yep. So best man at your wedding, only guy who should be touching is Shelby. And who are the other two guys? Uh, just two other friends. They're still, <laughs> uh, still keep in touch. That so. is great. Yeah. That is a great shot. Well, let's do this. Let's take the car outside. Let's look under the hood. Let's look at the interior. We'll start it up. We'll give people some exhaust sound, and we'll go from there. Sounds good. So here we are. We're finally here at the power plant. This is what we wanted to see. The, the GT500 has what size engine in it? This is a 428 police interceptor um, opposed to the uh, Cobra jet engine. It has a 735 Holley uh, carburetor and uh, you know this has been restored uh, totally to stock. So it, it looks like an aluminum intake. Correct. And there is absolutely no room here where you can even see the heads barely <laughs> or the, the headers I should say. The heads are fully off to, this, off to the uh, shock towers. Yes. And uh, you can see where there might be a heating problem with this car only because the whole engine is the entire engine compartment. And you've got air conditioning. Correct. Most of, most of the cars came fully optioned. Uh, so, uh, you know, they shoved the uh, air conditioning in there too. Uh, well, probably because the people inside the car need a little air from the amount of heat that you're generating. Exactly. Love the Shelby badge right here. Yep. That's, that's kind of a mainstay. The grill section here looks very kind of uh, looks light. Like, uh, yeah, it looks like chicken wire. Chicken wire, yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. I would say. Probably and is. We've got the Ford badging here. And, and tell me about the badge on the far side. The badge on the far side is the, they call it the buck tag, and, and that's what they put on there just bef before it would go down the Ford production line. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that was your stamps of what's going to be on this car. Right. It looks great. Thanks. Well, let's uh, talk about this wheel over here for a moment. Here we've got your, we, we've talked already about your rims that are right. original rims and, and why they're that way. We've already shown the, the hubcaps in the back. What do we have here? What's this? This is a 10-spoke Shelby wheel, and um, as we talked about before, most people threw the hubcaps out, <laughs> went out and bought some of these and put them on. And, uh, but since uh, we've had the car uh, redone, uh, I didn't put the hubcaps back on it, and uh, a lot of people call it the hubcap car now, and uh, actually you get a lot of compliments that way. So. It's got the nice little CS in there, and th those, are the, those are some great looking rims on the car as well. We saw yep. those rims actually in the picture yes. up on your wall, yep. which is great. Let's go to the interior. Okay. One of the fun features that I love about your car is tell me about this bag right here. That was a bag they used to give away in the 60s. It was my father's, and uh, I found it. So. Uh, 
it, it was a little garbage bag, so I just put it in there and, uh, I, you know. You know, I, I actually remember that to, yeah. from, from a car I had. Some of the features I love about the interior, the little GT500 snake biting badge is outstanding. Um, any other features, like tell me what's in here. Well, you got the, uh, an owner's manual, um, and then you have a, you know, a Shelby Cobra recommended uh, tire pressure uh, chart there for you. In, inside the glove box. Yes. That is yeah. just great. And some of the different uh, features there of, of how to hold on to your car. One of the things about holding on on the, on the inside, seat belt should be worn in conjunction with shoulder harness. And you've got a roll bar here. Correct. And the roll bar has a harness on it. That's correct. So yeah. they want you to hold on and make sure that you don't roll. Yes. Okay. Correct. And uh, this may not be the stock. Uh, we've got a slight modification in the uh, radio, but it's probably somewhat period correct. Oh, yes, definitely. And some of the gauges. Tell us about the gauging on your side. The standard gauge package. You have your gas, your, uh, your tack, and your speedo, and... Uh, uh, your temperature gauge, and then down at the bottom here, you have your uh, oil pressure and your amp. Uh, those are Stuart Warner gauges. This is actually a, a kind of a 65 T-Bird, again, uh, leftover that they put on and put the Shelby Cobra uh, emblem on it. This is actually for a, a GT500 KR. I bought it in about 1980 at a, uh, a swap meet, and I kept it all these years, and then when I finally uh, got this car, I said, well... I know it's not correct, but I'm putting it on anyway. So you have the original, but but I it's just your own little special right. touch. Right. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. And I see the fog lamps right down here too, right. for the for the front. Yep. And uh, let's uh, uh, while we're here, let's uh, let's enjoy the uh, engine note. Sure. All right. Oh, that sounds that sounds good. That sounds real good. <laughs> Thanks for being on My Car Story, Mark. It was a great opportunity to enjoy and learn about your car and share that experience and see your man cave and hang out. Appreciate it, Lou. We really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Hey Mark, thanks for being on My Car Story. It was great seeing your car and your man cave and hanging out with you. And I just want to say I appreciate it. It was awesome, Lou. Thanks. My pleasure. And uh, get out of here. It's been five hours. All right. That sounds great. <laughs> I'm out of here. We'll do it again. <laughs> you going to do it again? Yeah. Okay. He doesn't want you to say that. <laughs> <laughs>